With your first news at 10 Sports, here's J.T. Farabo. The Star Young Sports Complex hosted its first collegiate hockey game of the season tonight. Minot State traveled south to face the Marauders in their home opener. This is the first meeting between the two teams with both clubs as ACHA Division I teams. The Beavers look to turn defense into offense. The pucks lofted forward. Goalkeeper Conan Hayden can't deal with it. And Troy Hamilton is there to put Minot State in front. The Beavers were searching for a second right away. The Marauders couldn't get the puck clear. Walker Jerome picks it up at the center of the ice and has a go, but this time it's saved by Hayden. Under 40 seconds until the first intermission. Eric Crywy, he's going to fire from downtown. He's not even in frame. He's that far back. He finds the back of the net. The defending national champs prove that they're a force to be reckoned with. They improve to 6-0 and and dominate the Marauders in the first matchup of the season between these two teams. In ACH, NACH, NAHL hockey, excuse me, Aberdeen wins 3-1 over Minot. U Mary's football team has yet to earn its first win this fall. The Marauders hoped the first victory would come this afternoon when it hosted the 2-3 and three Winona State Warriors at the Bowl. And let me tell you, it was a beautiful fall day here at the Bowl. The Warriors, here they are in their opening drive. Cole Stenstrom is going to work for Shotgun and find James Durst in stride. A big defensive stop here. He's going to take him down right on the one-yard line. From there, Stenstrom is going to go firing in to Silver Campbell. He helps the scoring for the visitors. They lead one, I mean seven to zero. Now the Marauders from their own 42 yard line. Jeremiah Moore finds a seam. He turns on the Jets and takes off towards the end zone. The Marauders tie things up at seven. It wouldn't take long for Winona State to get back in front. Sindstrom fakes the hands off, rolls right, and finds Thomas Keysaw in the end zone. The Warriors take a 14 to seven lead. They would add a field goal in the second half to win 17-7. Minot State's football team is still searching for its first win. They fall 46-9 to the Wolves. It's been over a month since the Dickinson State Blue Hawks played a home game. It was homecoming this afternoon as the team hosted Dakota State. Let's find out who the real DSU is. Alan Reed's camera tells us the story. Dickinson State took seven minutes on their open drive. Quarterback Will Madler patiently waits, then finds Nathan Schumacher in the back of the end zone. This gets the Blue Hawks up 7-0. DSU's offense continues to roll on their second possession as Madler is going to hand it off to New Salem's Braden Zuroff. He finds a gap down the left. He's going to slow it down, wait for his teammates to block in front of him, cuts back inside, and finds the blue end zone. The Blue Hawks take a 14-0 lead. Their third possession, that would see Madler handed off to Darian Brown this time. He finds a gap through the middle, and yep, he makes it into the end zone. It's a 21 lead to start the second quarter, and it's a happy homecoming in Dickinson as the Blue Hawks win 40-14 over the Trojans. The Fighting Hawks hosted Western Illinois this afternoon. UND looks to make it three in a row over the Roughnecks. Quincy Vaughn, their quarterback, it's a QB sneak. He makes his way into the end zone. And look at this. He's going to hit a little gritty right there. UND's defense, they would hold Western Illinois to negative yards on their first drive. And then the offense would get back going. It's Simon Romfo with his first career touchdown. The Calvin North Dakota Navy spritz in for six more. After a Leatherneck field goal, Tommy Schuster is back to pass. And he finds Nick Cooper. He makes a nice toe-tapping catch to get the the, the Fighting Hawks on board, they take a big win over the Roughnecks. They win 49-10 to in a blowout. The Bison, they had a 28-7 to lead over the Bears at halftime. They would tack one more on in the fourth quarter. Cole Payton finds Jake Lippy in the back of the end zone for his touchdown of the season. It's a four-yard touchdown pass from Payton. The Bison get back to winning ways. They roll all over the Bears, winning 38-10 to on the road. In college volleyball, the Marauders and the Beavers both lose in three sets on the road, while the Mystics' fate was the same. They lose both of today's matchups. In high school volleyball, the Lakers win both sets 25-19 over the Honkers in the Northwest Conference Invitational Championship. Jamestown and Legacy have played each other twice already this season. Jamestown won the first meeting, while Legacy won 2-0 last Thursday. They played one final time with the one seed out of the West on the line. Both teams had an 11-1-2 record coming into this one. 
Jamestown took an early lead off of a PK, but the Sabres would come out firing. Ben McDonald squares it for Reese Snow, who taps it in. The game is leveled at one at the start of the second half. Legacy looking for another. Camden Coyman, he gives it to Uriel Rivera in the box, who's tripped up. It leads to a PK where Rivera is going to slot it into the back of the net. This gives the Sabres a 2-1 to one lead. Edie Ramadani is going to be leading the break here for Jamestown. He slots in Ryan Larson, who has the chance to tie it up, but he drags it wide. The Sabres go on to win 2-1 to one over the Blue Jays, and they'll be the number one seed from the West for the state tournament. Other qualifiers for soccer. The Demons win on PKs, while the Magi, they prove they're meant to be in this state tournament. That's a whopping win for them. Champions were crowned at the Mandan Tennis Center this afternoon. It's Carter Hatzenbuehler from Mandan and Century's Jared Pitcher in the singles finals. Pitcher is going to hit a backhand that's difficult for Hatzenbuehler, but look at him reach to get that point. The score was tied at four games apiece in the first set. Hatzenbuehler goes across to return the serve, but Pitcher will hammer it home to take the lead. In doubles, Minot, Aiden Deal, and Grayson Schaefer face legacies Drew Beasley and Caleb Johnson. Here's Johnson. He's going to snap this point down. It helps the Sabres take a 3-1 to one lead in the first set. Pitcher, and Hazen, Pitcher will top Hazen Bueller to take the singles crown. Minot's duo of Schaefer and Deal are the West doubles champions. In a decisive swim meet before the Sabres and the Patriots, Century comes out on top winning 105.2-85. to 85. In the ALDS Game 1 series, the Minnesota Twins fall 6-4 to four to the Houston Astros. Game 2 is set for tomorrow with first pitch at 7 p.m. That does it all for sports. We'll catch you right back after the break.